The story began centuries ago with the appearance of Akolo, a mysterious craftsman in a small town called Ejuka, at the banks of a great lagoon. Akolo the craftsman settled amongst blacksmiths and woodcarvers and soon began to teach even the best craftsmen in town from his wealth of experience. And because of his mastery, his fame soon spread across the town and beyond. However, his legend truly began after he brewed the first indigenous brew of that era. To perfect his recipe, he traded some of his artworks with European merchants in exchange for ingredients never seen before in that part of the world. People came from far and wide just to taste Akolo's unique brew. Akolo's successes got him the attention of the king, who rewarded him by making him a member of his advisory council. However, in all his fame and fortune, Akolo closely guarded the secret of his brew to his heart and never revealed the recipe to anyone, not even the king who he had formed a close bond with. As the fame of Akolo's brew grew, merchants formed a new trading route with Ijuka which gave the town a greater economic power. But then, enemies began to gather with the aim to invade, plunder Ejuka's wealth, and most importantly, to find the secret recipe of Akolo's brew. On getting wind of this plot by her neighbors, the king consulted Akolo to plan how best to defend Ejuka. Akolo devised a genius battle plan which helped the vastly inexperienced and outnumbered Ijuka forces to win a battle against a vastly superior force. But then, Akolo's victory only gave rise to a new breed of enemies. Powerful forces within the king's advisory council became jealous of his popularity and feared that the king might make him his successor. They plotted severally to kill him, but he managed to outfox them at every attempt. Akolo became weary of all these attacks and then he feared for his life. He retreated deep into the mangrove forest and was never to be seen again, taking with him his wealth of knowledge contained in an iron chest. Ijuka would manage to survive for a few years, but the loss of Akolo drastically affected its fame and fortune. Enemies began circling around and regrouped for another assault on Ijuka. The battle was swift and one-sided as the foreign invaders laid waste to the once prominent town. Ijuka became a shadow of itself, living in fear of unannounced invasion from foreign threats and in constant regret of the flight of Akolo. Secretly hoping for a day when the wise Akolo the craftsman would walk back into their midst, but in time their hopes gradually faded away, just like the morning mist. Since it's common knowledge that Akolo the craftsman's last location was his ride into the mangrove forest, the Council of Elders will be sending worthy adventurers on a search back in time to the age of craftsmanship. Their task will be to search and discover Akolo's secret in the iron chest never recovered. Their journey will be daunting and the odds will not be in their favor. They have to defeat their doubts. They must learn from each other, but first, they must become skilled craftsmen themselves. And the one who returns with the iron chest will be celebrated as a champion. The search begins. The new Gulda, now crafted with passion. Also available in 45 CL bottles and 44 CL cans. Contestants arrive at the coastal town. Three maidens dressed in their traditional costume, each carrying local pots, approaching the confused looking contestants. Oh, did I mention too that the people are very pleasant and welcoming to strangers? Life is in phases, so will your journey. The bearer of the calabash has lanterns. Each one, pick one. There seems to be a message for our contestants. Align yourselves by the colors of your lantern. Your lantern color represents your clan. It seems the Council of Elders have something in store for our contestants 
you will find compasses with coordinates that will help guide you in your quest. Each group will have to seek directions for more clues, as indicated in the scrolls within the calabash. Looks like this year will be a different twist to other editions of the Golda Ultimate Search. A sign of what is to come, maybe. In a world where the mundane has become the order of the day, where there is no longer strict attention to details and the art of craft is seen as old fashioned, there became a need to bring back an age that promotes the importance of skill, attention to detail and precision. That age of craftsmanship. The clarion call was made and over 20,000 people heeded the call. It was a search for the best of the best across the land. Not an easy task, but we eventually found our final 18 ultimate warriors who will compete for the total prize of 50 million Naira. This is getting interesting. The screening for the Golda Ultimate Search Season 12 began in Abuja. Hundreds came out to show the stuff they are made of. Ladies and gentlemen, officially, your journey starts. Good luck. As usual, it was time for the physical events. I'm Tracy trying to catch my breath. I'm still trying to we actually actually try to process everything because I didn't expect this. But I'm happy I'm here. I'm here to win, go all through the way, here to compete and come out the winner. The warm-up race have got some panting already. I wish they knew what lies ahead. Almost everyone looked bright and pumped up for the physical audition. Go! This is intense. Whatever the task is, I'm in. I'm all in. One by one, they fell off as they gave their best. Some stood strong, pushing themselves to the limits of their endurance. just squatted for five minutes and um, it's really not funny but I'm hoping that it will get better. Go! 
If you have got those grades, you are disqualified. Now, the beautiful thing about today for me is, is nostalgic in the sense that I'm back to the same grounds where I passed my auditions. I'm glad to be a point of reference. And so far, let the best man win. All the best women this time around. Only a few made it to the next stage. If you know you cannot swim, please step aside. Swimming can be a tricky affair. I usually wonder why some say they can when they know they can't swim. Well, I tried my best. Oh well, what do I know? We just finished the swimming contest and uh, I made it through. We thank God. The purpose of this journey is still yet to be known, so I just hope and trust in God. I am very, very happy I came out successful. I was able to get to the end of the pool and I'm so happy for that. Not everyone will make it into the Gulda Ultimate Search. Many will be called, but only few will eventually be chosen. Actually, I can swim very well, but then I just dive even aspect and everything. When they just say, oh, your mask, guys said, go. All of a sudden, everybody just dive inside the water. And then I was just trying to, like, accommodate my, I wanted the water to accommodate me first, like, just to relax my mind. My, I think I was just a bit tense or something. This taskmaster is tired. Anyways, uh, look forward to the other regions. Um, for now, Abuja, thank you so much for having us and hope to see the selected ones in the jungle. was a beehive of activity. Definitely, I feel like I stand a chance because I'm the only big girl here. I feel like I have all it takes. It doesn't have to do with power, it doesn't have to do with strength, but I feel I'm mentally ready. Many have come out to compete for the place in the Golda Ultimate Search. Morale is high. So is their determination. If looks could determine winners, then most of our contestants here are already winners. But looks can be deceptive. It is never an easy task to make it into the Golda Ultimate Search. Your physical and mental strength will not only be tested, but your endurance as well. No. 
enough to stop them. Maybe swimming will be better. Or I probably spoke too early. Perseverance to push yourself further. So I feel very excited. I, I didn't know I can I can do this. I, at first I wanted to chicken out. When I saw the pool, I wanted to I just wanted to take exit and they told me that if I if I don't do it, I'll be disqualified. So I told myself it's better to try and fail than not to try at all and be disqualified. So I did it and I, I didn't know I could do it. For the ultimate warrior. There is only one way, and that is forward. Initially, I was feeling tense, and I was just telling my, my fellow aspirants how tense I'm feeling. But I always have this belief that if you're determined, you can always push harder. But in all, some stood tall at the end. I am expecting to be called for probably the next interview or for the final selection or probably going into the jungle, which I believe is my destination. For good ultimate season 12. Today we are at the Lagos State Regional Selection where we're going to be selecting potential ultimate men and ultimate women. There is something always different and magical about Lagos. The sheer diversity of hopefuls is one that is not replicated anywhere else. Who's not excited? 100% excited that long time legend is back. Uche, good ultimate start. Good ultimate start is back. Maybe Lagos will yield more warriors. Men and women of valor assembled to start their journey for the place in the Golda Ultimate Search. I'm very ready because I've done my fiscal drills, I've done my water drills, I've done everything necessary to be selected. The harder some came, the harder they fell too. We're almost there! We're almost there! Some practically gave up. Others tried to stay the course. Nice! Welcome to the Gold Ultimate Set! I feel I have what it takes to survive. 17, 18, enjoy it, enjoy it. Hold it down, hold it down, squat hold, squat hold, squat hold. Let's go.
Now, if you cannot swim, raise your hand above your head. Sir, please step to the right. Thank you very much for your honesty. I don't think they are going to swim. I don't think so. But when it comes to survival of the fittest, I can do it. I was struggling. The problem is that I like diving. So that's just it. Maybe some of the contestants can redeem themselves with the swimming. For some, it's a seamless task. There was energy ball. I don't know where I was trying to rush. So I found myself standing in one place. But for many others, it felt like drowning in your own confidence. I'm all done. How to finish? You can't finish like this. How to finish my swimming? What finish your swimming? You made it. I tried. You made it. I tried my best. What happened? Tell us. <sighs> I said, you see, we got here. I can't give up, although I, you know, well, at least I got to the finish line. That's the good thing. Even if I get dropped here, woo, I made it to the swimming. I went through some uh, YouTube videos to learn how to go, go through it. But I believe if you do that, you're supposed to practice. But I just thought probably what I learned on the video could um, actually help me. Many came, saw, and conquered. Oh, it went really well, it went really well. Uh, we we're already tired from the first three exercises, but we had to push through, and I'm happy I'm here. The lucky ones got the opportunity to go into the next round. I tried my possible best in diving in the water. Take your time, take your time. It's all well, at least. I rescued myself. But for the unlucky ones, it was gloom and sadness. My mom called me before we started swimming. I'll be careful and blah blah. So it was on my mind. So <sighs> I've seen strong people. I've seen brave people. I have seen slow people. I've seen really fast people. I've seen desperate people. And I've also seen people who are willing to push beyond the limits. Now I've seen potential ultimate men and ultimate women. But who gets into the jungle? My name is Kunle Remy. I am your taskmaster, and I look forward to seeing you in the jungle. It was a journey well worth it. We had our 38 contestants who will be going to sea school for the final auditions. A place where leadership and quantitative skills will be tested. Welcome to sea school. Thank you, sir. All right, in sea school, are we good to go? Good to go, good to go, good to go, sir. Only 18 will go into the jungle for this year's quest. Are we happy? Go, sir, sir. I want I told, I till we fall. I want, I do, I till we fall. I want, I told, I till we fall. I want, I do, I till we fall. This is the way we start the day. This is the way. There is no room to rest. A true warrior is always prepared. It was over, under, together and teamwork. It was tough for some. And tougher for others. Some of the contestants never saw this coming. But one thing you can't fault was determination. Nobody wanted to go back home, but only 20 will make it to the final audition where our 18 warriors will eventually emerge.
And for the 20 finalists who made the cut, no one knew who would emerge as a top 16, while the remaining four will go on to be the wild cards. Two out of these will be voted back into the show by the audience as their favorites. Hmm. I've always wanted to be part of something bigger than myself. I've always wanted to go the long haul. I've always wanted to come out of my comfort zone and do something differently. And uh, Good Art Message gave me that opportunity to do it. To be honest, I didn't know that the auditioning was going on the day it went on, on at the stadium. I, I didn't have access to my mail, so I normally train some models uh, on how to cut work and, um, and all that. So I gave them an appointment that Tuesday to come meet me at stadium as usual. By the time I got there, I, I saw the gold ultimate stash stuff at the pool side and I was like, what's going on? I signed up for this stuff. So I went and asked one of the ladies uh, wearing the gold t-shirt and she, she was like, oh, we're having the audition in today. So you should meet one of our admin and rectify that. So I stayed back, so I suspended the training I came for. They took me to one of the officials and then the, they went through the system. I was like, ah, oh, but the message was sent to you. How come? I was like, I couldn't access my mail. So I had to use another phone, log into my mail, and I saw that the mail was actually there, it's just that I, I didn't have access to it. So immediately they rectified that. I was like, so I can audition? They were like, yeah, sure. So I quickly rushed down to my car, changed wear my joggers and my trainers, and then that was it. Now, there are so many reasons and so many things that um, actually motivates me to do this. One of them was the, some dreams and some goals I have in my head. I've learned a whole lot, you know, when it has to do with teamwork. And um, I started up um, a law degree 2013 in Ghana but couldn't finish it up because uh, my dad wasn't there again so I couldn't pay up so I had to come back and pick up another program. I've always wanted to go back and finish up that um, that degree because of the passion I have for Lego practice. With this uh, opportunity that Go Dot Message has given to me and given to us, whatever fund I get from this it will mean a whole lot, not just to me but to people around me. I'm here because I want to rewrite the history of Golda Ultimate Search with my own story. I was left all alone. I lost my parents and my siblings. I'm trying to do it on my own. And I put myself through school. I was on scholarship. Now when I came for the audition, I had some friends telling me, man, you don't know anybody out there. Who's going to help you out? Ultimate Search training is fair. The selection is not based on bias. It's actually fair. If someone like me can go get to the stage, any other person can come here. Entertainment is me, I'm entertainment. So, passion about entertainment. Since entertainment has been part of me, I'm going to have the time to represent the brand anywhere. I want the world to look at me and like, okay, this guy is the product of gold ultimate sash. There's one particular person that I would have loved to be here at this point in time. But unfortunately, she's not here. My mom, my late mom. So I was very close to my mom. Okay, I was very close to my mom. I I love sports. I love sports. I love sports. Um, in primary school, I was the sports prefect. When I got to university, I continued my pursuit of sports. But you know, Nigeria, pursuing sports and education can be a bit tedious. So uh, I was the sports director. I was the one-time sports director of my department in school. I was the coach of the football team in my final year. And so the motivation for me for joining Good Ultimate Search, aside from sports, one other thing I love is the military. What I would do with the money if I win? is because I was denied the opportunity of chasing my dreams in sports, I would like to help others, um, upcoming generation, build sports academy, because education doesn't just have to be confined to the four corners of the classroom. Now, when they see that the money is there in sports, now people are now pushing their children, yeah, go and do sports, go and play football. I want to be able to give people the opportunity to pursue their dreams. Service to humanity is the best work of life. And I, what I tell people is, 
our gift in life is for us to help others. The river, the river doesn't drink its water, it serves others. The river gains its fulfillment from serving others. So whatever gift you have, whatever talent you have, whatever passion you have, it is for you to serve others. So I don't like dishonesty. I don't like people that are not accountable for their actions. It will be fun for me, especially, it will be fun. I came for this show because I've always wanted to be part of it right from when it started, when I was still a teenager. I always wanted to experience it. But why I came this year was I had a business somewhere in Guarimpa. So on Christmas Day, our shop burned down. So they gave us back the place just this year for us to start all over. I needed something to keep me away, something that would just calm me down. I needed an experience or something that would take me away from the normal world. And then I just went online and I saw Good Out Message is back. And I was like, wow, this is what I've always wanted. I didn't know I would get to this point. I felt all those people were better. They looked scary. And I didn't have any of them here. I had one teammate, she was a, she's an athlete. She, so I felt she was like a competition, but she couldn't meet up. The reason I came into the competition, first and foremost, I did it because of my mom. She's a single mom and she's been doing all her best for us, for the family. And I feel it's, it's something I should do at this early stage of life to help her with some of her needs and goals in life as well. Then another thing I came to realize is it's not just for myself. I didn't come into the competition for myself, but Secondly, for the brand, for the brand Golda, I feel, I feel people should know about the brand. And I feel it's, it's my job as a business student to advertise and market the brand, the brand once I'm out of the jungle. So what if I didn't make it? I feel I'll be proud of myself because I, I had to take the bold step to face my fears. And I did a lot of things I, Deep down, I, I know on a normal circumstance, I, I might not do. When I first saw the crowd, I was quite scared because, I mean, but I had to put my feet in front of my fears. That's how I scaled through the challenges I had. I had to keep my focus straight. I had to think of my mom. She wouldn't want to see me fail. So I, I kept pushing on, though I felt like, okay, yeah, I was the youngest. So I felt, People with experience, they are more, they are more advanced than I am, but my faith kept me strong. I'm here to improve myself in all capacity possible. And uh, also, uh, because I'm a fitness instructor, uh, Good Out Message, it's actually the best platform for me to be able to showcase what I do, sir. And will also aid in, uh, my 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 vision and my goals also as well sir it's been an awesome and it's been a bittersweet experience so far sir because uh well i think coming from bauchi uh i've never really been in a competition before this is the first time although i work out like every single day because i i do train people i'm a personal fitness trainer but like i think from the regionals that i came the first time wow it was it was really tough I mean, going through the squat session that we started with and holding it for five minutes, like it wasn't, it wasn't easy at all. And more importantly, I realized that it's not just about your professionalism as a fitness person. And I've, I think it's, it's about endurance and technique also as well. To be honest, I didn't, I didn't really, really thought that I was, I was going to, um, I was going to be able to make it to the next phase, like seriously. But I just go in there and I give my best. Sir. If I don't make it to the jungle, sir, at least I've learned a lot. The lessons that I've learned. The lessons that I've learned, I'm going to incorporate it into my own personal life, sir. And I am not going to stop competing. I think this has really opened my eyes to certain realities because now I now know my level of capacity because I've never really tested it before. And I think I'm just getting started, sir.
My passion in life is will. My drive is will. If I say will, it makes me feel like I should excel in anything I do. I don't give up on things. James Allen said, you will what you will to become. And I am a teachable person. I learn new things. I learn, I, I try to, to venture into new adventures and try to see things from different perspectives. And the journey of my ultimate search starts 2009. The reason why I feel I'm supposed to be here is like, I'm a man searching for purpose. And gold has brought something that gets every young athletic Nigerian on their brink to their TV if you don't want to come. But when you choose to come, it makes you to stay off vices like drugs, makes you rest well, makes you exercise, which is going to be benefit to you on the other side and prepare you for that activity that you intend to do. It has really come a long way, my, my dream and belief. Um, I, I grew into a family, a military family, and I've seen the sacrifices my dad put in for the nation. And that drew me into understanding the fact that giving back to people is the ultimate goal in life. With that, I've tried my best to see a way that I can give back. I, I tried to get into the Nigeria Defense Academy 11 times. I got into the interview four times. I didn't still make it. I, I tried getting into the short service four times. As I'm speaking, I still applied for the Air Force short service, which is still ongoing. This is just the, for the main reason of giving back. My life is just all about giving back and helping people to grow. Seeing them grow makes me very happy. And this is a platform for me to actually achieve that. This journey has been the sweetest. Sometimes I pinch myself and ask, are you, especially when I was on the flights, I was like, are you the one flying for another set of interviews? It's been a roller coaster. It's been a good ride. I can say the disappointment was for the first one, but for this, I, I believe that it has been a very good one. The, the, the organizers, they've done perfectly well in bringing us together. I know the competition is a lot. Seeing numerous participants, sometimes I get, I fidget and say, wow, competing against such people. But I just have to believe, if it's yours, it's yours. If it's not yours, 11 times tried the NDA, till now I'm not still a military man. So I've already grew past that stage of getting disappointed.